So Mike, you know, it's a copycat world, unfortunately, out there, and especially when things start to, to go overseas. So there's been mention of a lot of companies or even people starting to use your wavelength formula or try to kind of copy what you're doing. Would you explain, you know, what's so special about your approach and, you know, how you're handling those things? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. From a patent standpoint, we've got patent pending on different indications that we're building into the bed, you know, the patent office came out and said, you cannot patent wavelengths. And it's not our intention to do that. That's kind of restrain a trade, but we use six wavelengths. And in those six wavelengths, we target three different chromophores and we target them effectively. So we need an effective use of real estate in the machine so that we can get dose optimized for those specific wavelengths that we want. And again, this is why we hired Dr. Hamlin in 2018 to work with us on this. The greens and blues are very similar and we're starting to see companies use blue. And I, I, I like what blue does. It's a great wavelength. The problem is that it can burn up the retina. And the last thing we want to do is damage somebody when they're in a machine. Mm -hmm. The other thing in 2008 to 2010, we started seeing ambers and you know oranges and yellows and things like that. Yeah that was proven to not be a, an effective use of real estate. It still may be absorbed. It still may trigger reaction, but it's not really absorbed well. So basically what you're doing is you're using wavelengths in the system and lowering the total energy because you're taking away from the absorption. What we believe we have is the six best wavelengths that you can have in the system to create the three top sets of reactions from the three different chromophores. I could put 20 wavelengths in the system, but that's not going to make it better. Yeah. If we put two wavelengths in the system, I don't think we're good enough. And one thing just to elaborate on, you mentioned green, which is unique. It's not a lot of beds that have that. And what specifically does the green target and why did you add that in? So red infrared, for example, is analgesic on nerves. Green actually hits a cannabinoid pain pathway. So it's a different pain pathway. If you're in pain, you know, you want to get rid of that pain. So two different pathways is better than one. The cannabinoid pain pathway works for migraines whereas red infrared may not. The cannabinoid pain pathway can work better for fibromyalgia, whereas red infrared doesn't work as well for it. So um, adding green to that helps that. Green, when we talk to people in Europe, they will suggest it is antiviral and antibacterial. I don't think the United States has done a lot of studies on that as we speak. We see dramatic drops in blood sugar in the machine. Again, green's absorbed in the, heme in the oxyhemoglobin. So there's absolutely a correlation with that. When that happens, we also see a reduction in neuropathic pain. So yeah, I mean, green is cool and it also has a calming effect. There's something about it. In 2008, it was kind of the wild west of LED light therapy and people were putting peacock colors and orange and amber and everything <laughs> in there. So we saw all that. We had the ability to look at it. But when I put green on there, I just felt better.